Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson three of learning C++ by making games. In this lesson, we'll go over what pseudocoding is and pseudocode our number guesser. If you're already familiar with pseudocoding and you want to jump to the actual pseudocoding for the game we're going to make, look at the description below. There'll be timestamps there. That said, let's get into the lesson. So in this lesson, we'll cover what is pseudocode, I'll give you some challenges to do, and then we'll go over pseudocoding our number guesser in Visual Studio. So what is pseudocode? Pseudocode is a way to outline code in a simple to understand format so you know from start to finish what the code is going to do. It is artificial and it's an informal way to help develop algorithms. An algorithm is a logical organization of sequences to address particular problems. And by problem, I mean the end goal. So it is a way to figure out how to solve a problem. For example, in our number guesser, the problem is guessing the number. So the pseudocode would be how do we get from the user prompt to finding out if the answer is correct or wrong. Pseudocode does not need to involve any code. Now, some people, myself included, will often slip actual code into pseudocode, and the pseudocode will typically follow the formatting of the code. But pseudocode, by far and large, is however you need to write the code in order to understand what you are working on. So you probably think this means that pseudocode can be whatever you want it to be. Well, the answer to that idea is no. It cannot be. There are some rules and some best practices, and here's a list of some of them. I do suggest you do research and look at some pseudocode challenges and examples out there on the internet, as well as some blog posts on good pseudocoding. So some of the best practices are that typically it is best to use the actual variable names you'll use in real code. So in the example we'll do with our number guesser, the variable names, and I know we haven't gone over what a variable is yet, we will in a few videos, will match the actual variables I will use in the real code. And in this case, that means also using the naming conventions you plan to use. So if you're not familiar with naming conventions in C++, there are various approaches to naming conventions. Uh, C++ being case sensitive, some people will use what's known as camel casing, where the first letter of the first word is lowercase, but the first letter of every other word has an uppercase. And that's because you can't put spaces in, but it allows you to easy, de easily delineate words from each other. People like myself will use Pascal casing, where every word gets a capital letter. I make one exception to this with Boolean values, where I do actually use a lowercase b at the start. Again, we'll go over that in a few videos. Or some people use what's known as underscore casing, where you just put underscores between each word. Various places will use various different approaches. So don't worry, pick an approach, stick with it for now, and then know if you ever get employed doing any programming, your employer will probably have their own convention they want you to use. Do not be too abstract or too generalized. So code should follow the same form the code uses. In other words, use indentations as needed, be specific to what it's doing, don't be too obtuse in what it's saying. And again, we'll go over this when we actually do the practice for our number guesser. Be simple and concise. Do not be too verbose. You will probably at the start and that's fine, but as you get more confident, become concise. Now that also means don't become too generalized when you become too concise or too abstract. The best pseudocode, and just like the best variable names, should be something if you put it down for a week, 10 weeks, however long, when you come back to it, you can understand what you are doing right away. And remember that some employers will use particular systems and that you should use those systems. Now I'm gonna give you some challenges and these are things for you to pseudocode. Don't worry about C++ conventions. The idea here is to get comfortable thinking like a programmer and breaking each part down into its smallest problem or its smallest component 
and working through the algorithm needed to solve that problem. And next week, I'll put up some example solutions to both of these problems. All right. That said, the first challenge is design a program that asks a user to input their name, age, and favorite color. The second challenge is write pseudocode for making an omelet. Assume you have the ingredients in your house already and you don't need to go to the store and buy them. All right. That said, open up your Visual Studio project for the number guesser game and let's get started with the pseudocoding. All right, now that we're back inside of our project, let's start our pseudocode, and we're going to just do this at the top. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my comment slashes, or I can use this setup and comment between the two. In fact, I think I'll use this so I don't have to type the slashes in each time. So, and if you didn't automatically put this ending one in, you need this to end your comments. What we're going to do here, based on the lesson we just did a moment ago, is we're gonna create some pseudocode. So the first thing I'm gonna say is I'm gonna, I'm gonna give us our first iteration for this. We're gonna do this in two iterations. So iteration one, our goal is to make a game that checks if a guest number is correct or not. What I want you to do is based on everything we talked about in the last part, try to break this down to the simplest components and write out your own pseudo code. Pause the video and take a try at it now, and then resume the video to see what we are doing, or if you're not comfortable trying yet, just go ahead and keep watching. All right, so I know I'm gonna need to have two variables, and we haven't covered what variables are yet, and we'll cover that in a couple of videos. I believe that's a video planned as video five of the series. So if, you're, if you haven't talked about declaring variables, don't worry about it. But the first thing I know is I'm going to need two integers. And I'm gonna just write declare guest number. And in fact, guest number is the name I'm going to use of the variable. So in my pseudocode, I like actually using that particular name that I'll use in the actual code. And I'm gonna need to declare a second integer, which will be favorite. All right, I might live in the UK, but I have an American accent, so it's weird putting that U in. So favorite number. And I know that that favorite number needs to be equal to a random number. I'm not sure what a number is, so it needs to be equal to a random number. They'll be between one and 10. Now, technically there should be more pseudocode for this random number, but I don't want to get into that particular part of random numbers just yet. We'll take care of that in the next few videos, or not in the next few, but in a few videos. Next, I need to actually display something, so I'm going to say display, to the user, some instruction, and that instruction will be guess a number. And I need to get that guessed number from the user, so we're going to get guessed number. And now I need to check, is that guest number equal to or not equal to the favorite number? And I'm gonna want the game to keep going while that number is not accurate. So this might be the part that if you haven't thought about the every little step, you might have missed. And this is, that's fine. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the word while. And that's actually a keyword, and we'll talk about keywords in a bit in a few videos, or in the next video actually. So while the guest number is not equal to the favorite number, the game will keep going. And when this happens, so I'm gonna indent just like I would while creating this actual loop, and this is a while loop. And again, we'll talk about that in a few videos when we get to flow control. I will display some information to the user. I'm gonna say what they guessed. So you guessed, no, I was right the first time, sorry. Hard time to see through the microphone there. You guessed, and that's guest number. And notice I've put this extra space in. The reason I've done this is when it displays a guest number, you need those spaces, otherwise it's gonna butt against the text. And that is not my favorite number. And then we're gonna go down in a line and we're gonna ask the user to guess again. So again, you might have not thought that you're gonna need to check in this way and keep the game running. That's fine, that, that, these things happen. And then again, we're gonna need to get guest number. If this is right, what we're going to do 
is we are just going to display you were, or you are right. Semicolon, guest number, and space again. Space is indeed my favorite number. All right, so that is the pseudocode for this particular project. Now I'm just gonna save this so we have that pseudocode ready to go. And in the next video, we'll actually implement this first input. We'll talk about what this is, because this is very important. And we'll also put our return in, which seems to be missing, and go over a bit on our keywords. All right, all of that said, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to be here when we start making this game, hit that subscribe and notify icon. And consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.